Okay, why there are very uh, few students? Good morning. Uh, the others have not joined this Google Meet yet. So please convey that uh, current lecture will be taken. Okay. If you don't know that uh, this lecture is not free, please convey this message to your uh, classmate. That SOC lecture is currently being taken by PMJ sir, right? So. Because these initial lectures of Web API, are, Web API are important because to learn this Web API concept, it is necessary that you have a good background, the good foundation for the Web API framework. Afterwards, it, it will become quite easy to work with the Web API. Okay, fine. So, uh, so far we have created a products API in which we provided only two methods, get products and get all products. So based on the ID, we can search for the product or we can retrieve the entire list of products. So based upon our uh, URL, the web API framework will be able to match one of the action method of the controller. And that method will be executed and it will return the data. And we have seen that it can automatically convert the data depending upon the client request. So even we need not a single line of code for that. So it supports the JSON format and XML format. So these are called media type format. So these two uh, are by default supported by this framework. And for others, custom format, you can also add it to your project. Okay, you can add the code into a project to support the other types of data. And uh, we have seen uh, how to develop the client for that. We have seen the web client as well as the Windows form based client or desktop application through which we can consume this REST API. And even you can extend it for the mobile application from which you can consume this REST API. Because once you know how to in, uh, consume it, then rest of the thing is quite easy. And it is al already available on the HTTP protocol. So you can also make the AJAX request to consume the REST API. And simply we need to uh, provide the type of HTTP verb, whether it is get, post, put, delete, and uh, provide the data. In case uh, if you are storing the data in, uh, onto the server side, then as part of your HTTP request body, you send the data and it will be stored by the service. Okay, so uh, today we'll uh, talk about the routing mechanism in Web API. So already something, some part of it uh, is already covered in the ASP.NET MVC. But we'll, it is uh, slightly different from the routing in ASP.NET MVC. So we'll highlight those parts. How does it differ from the uh, routing in ASP.NET MVC? So let me share my slide. For this, uh, we'll create a new project and uh, 
Previously, what we have done, we have created the Web API project from the scratch. So we started with the empty template and we have created our own controller class and we created the products uh, product model ourselves and uh, we we also return the action methods get product and get all products to return the product information now we'll uh, go with the default template available in the visual studio so we'll create a new project and uh, the type of the project will be asp.net web application and give the appropriate name and now uh, from the template we are selecting a web api template and uh, for uh, folder structure we are selecting the mvc as well as web api folder structure so you can see here this is the template and here we have selected the mvc as well as web api okay yeah so it will also create this uh, folder structure as well as some default uh, files will also be created default controllers will be created and some models will be also be created that will support the a basic controller with some uh, predefined uh, action methods and it will also support some form of authentication so this is the scaffolded folder structure of our uh, web api project and we'll see that it has already created because we selected the mvc and uh, web api it has already created these controllers models and uh, some other folders you know that these views are there right and uh, some of the other files other than uh, this mvc it is global asx files and uh, this web config file for configuring your web api so we'll talk about it uh, some of these things if we just expand this app start folder we'll see that many configurations files are present in the app underscore start folder like bundle config filter config identity management routing authentication and others web api configuration files within the controller folder it has already created three controller for our help like account controller home and values controllers and three models are already there account binding account view model and identity model now within uh, from within this uh, global.asx files it, it is refers to the when the web api uh, project starts it will configure some it will uh, do some default configuration so it will it is the application start method will be invoked whenever our web api application starts and it will do some default configuration like uh, area configuration global configuration filtering configuration routing and bundle so we'll look at uh, briefly talk about what is area what is global configuration what is filter routing and bundle anyone has idea about uh, areas in asp.net uh, application i don't know whether it is covered in dotnet subject or not i think uh, uh, this is new to you area configuration areas are nothing but the uh, grouping of your mvc project into several subgroups so for the real life application or real world application normally the application contains uh, hundreds of uh, mvc files and to manage them it becomes daunting task so that uh, uh, this uh, area concept is introduced wherein you can group this multiple mvc classes into several groups like uh, in your company 
you are maintaining say there are different kinds of departments so some of them are like uh, say finance department another is hr department okay you have a uh, say account department or some other then stock department stock management so several departments are there and related that you have several files so these several mvc files belong to this department this department you can group them and we call it as an area so basically for management purpose this concept is used uh, we'll see that how to what kind of global configuration you can do by calling this uh, static register method of this class web api config file filters configurations are uh, global filter settings can be done over here so all of you know the concept of filters are you familiar uh, with the concept of filters yes yeah, so what is the purpose of filter This is basically a general concept. Okay, it allows code to run before or after specific stages in the request processing pipeline. Correct. Exactly uh, the definition of filters. And uh, yeah, we have studied uh, middleware. Okay, in Node.js, there is a concept. Uh, in Express, there is a concept of middleware. And uh, you have filters in. Uh, Solid JSP also okay. Your Java project in the web application where is a concept of filters, and in .NET we in Express there are middlewares. So basically, filter will uh, can do pre pre processing as well as post processing. So here also there is a pipeline structure exactly the your uh, input um, your request. What is your request message? What is the type of the request message? What is the input to your uh, web API application? Or what? Uh, what is in general? What are my input and outputs? For my web API application, what are my inputs and outputs? So we have deployed web API onto the server. Suppose this is the IIS server. and our web api project is running inside server what is my input what is the output The input is nothing but your HTTP request. And output is nothing but your HTTP response. Okay. So basically this is HTTP request. And again, this request and response messages are divided into two parts. Header and body part. Okay. So this is your request, as well as response will also have the header and body. right. 
and header you know several key value pairs are there header also key value pairs and body will contain the normally the data that you are sending or that what you are receiving as part of the response message so uh, this can be pre processed or post process uh, during the uh, pipeline correct so that is the filtering part we'll see it later on once we have covered the basic part we'll see the filtering later on next is a uh, uh, routing configuration say so basically uh, you know the roles of the filters like uh, you logging purpose authentication authorization so there are different benefits of filters so for that uh, for that purpose you can use the filters so we can create the custom filters also and we can do the reprocessing of the http request message or post processing of the http response message or you and you can do the short circuiting like suppose uh, the user request is not authenticated it will not be uh, inputted to the further phases of the pipeline it can directly send back the response message containing that uh, website is forbidden right so those kind of job can be done by writing filters next is a uh, uh, routing configuration so uh, based on your url okay http request will contain the url and based on the url appropriate uh, controllers will be selected and one of the action method will be executed so that will be determined by setting up the routes okay so that configuration is done by the routing table and this is the route table right then we have a bundle configuration any idea about uh, bundling now it is most of the uh, web application uh, does this uh, bundling so uh, whether knowing indirectly it is uh, done by the framework whatever uh, the sorry uh, whatever the framework that you are using it will be done by that so in bundling basically you have the your uh, project will contain many assets for example your project might contain uh, the css file html javascript file then any other data file and any other files so all these files or your code and all these things will be cs file all these are your uh, project configuration file you whenever you want to deploy it it will bundle into a single file or one or more file so that is called bundling and that process is done automatically by this code okay so your code is deployed basically as a single file it will be deployed onto the server okay so on your server you are deploying it is as a single file and whenever there is a input it will be given as an output so there are two process one is bundling and there is also uh, another process uh, done is called minification this process you know i think uh, normally you have jquery javascript code when you download it you can have the two options you can download the minified or you can download the uh, non minified uh, source source code okay so normally say say you have javascript file then you can download this entire mini, minified file or uh, non minified file like jquery or any library which is javascript library okay you can download the minification version in which it will take less space so this minified file is nothing but uh, all the extra white spaces are removed okay so extra white spaces are removed unnecessary white spaces are removed from the file like new line tab okay so normally when we write the code you will have you will see that here there is a new line here there is a new line okay so it is readable just to increase the readability right so here this is the new line here there is a new line but this new line here there is a tab character 
okay here there is a tab character so these are the tab characters so these are removed and converted into the minified version and that will occupy less space so that will decrease the uh, bandwidth okay it will decrease the bandwidth of the our project so that if the client is downloading suppose front end data is downloaded onto the browser then it will take less time okay to reduce the bandwidth it will take less time it will speed up the process of downloading the web page so that's why this minification so these two process are done bundling and minification and uh, additional thing it might done it will also change the some of the variable names so your variable name is uh, very long suppose the variable name is uh, something like this web api this is the class name so suppose this is the class name web api application and here some variable here a variable uh, long variable name and it is used multiple time then it can reduce it to a short variable name so these are the basically just to save the space or reduce the space of the final file so there are some configuration done at the beginning of the uh, your project for this application we'll see that <coughs> We'll discuss this uh, routing part. So here, see that global configuration. We are configuring this web API config dot register method. So this is the static class web API config. It has static method register. It will be invoked at the beginning of the our application. <coughs> now, uh, okay. Here we'll see that this is the pre-generated code. So here are some these are some code for uh, handling the authentication. You can see that in the filter some authentication is specified. So right now we are not uh, discussing it. We'll discuss it when we'll cover the authentication. Now uh, today we are going uh, interested in routing part. Okay, we are interested in routing. So it supports two form of routing. One is attribute based routing and another is convention based routing. Okay, so in Wave API, it's supposed to form up routing. One is called attribute based routing. So here, this static method, this class, uh, this object is of type HTTP configuration. So basically, we are configuring our application because it deals with the HTTP protocol. The input is HTTP message and output is HTTP response message. So it deals with the uh, this HTTP request. So it configures the, or it basically it enables that attribute based routing. So there is a support of attribute based routing through this method. Uh, so do you know what is uh, attribute based routing? Maybe uh, it might be covered in ASP.NET MVC. OK. So uh, what happens in attribute-based routing? For the action methods, you can define the attributes. OK. For action method, as part of uh, the controller, you can, you can annotate them with the attributes. OK. You can annotate it with some attributes. So suppose, uh, let me know. I will give you an example of uh, the route, uh, attribute based routing. Suppose I write down my uh, method name is uh, action method, suppose action method. Okay. And if I say attribute HTTP get. Okay, this is uh, okay. There is, uh, this is one of the attributes you can define. It. Okay, that means this action method, the name can be anything. We have seen that uh, the action method name must begin with uh, get post put delete, right? Some HTTP verbs. Your action method name must begin with get post put delete but it is not mandatory it is not must it should but if it is not beginning with this uh, http verbs 
then it can be any name but you need to annotate uh, that particular action method with the uh, this kind of attribute like http get that means whenever there is a http get request then this action method will be executed and you can also uh, define the path specifically you can define that it should be uh, like api slash uh, products okay products less two so this path okay whatever this your path so it will try to match with the products controller and this is the id of the product so it will try to match it with the one of the controller section method okay so this path can also be given as an attribute to one of the action method and you can override it so that is attribute based routing in convention based routing you can define the routes using the this method map http root okay a map http route method so this is a static method so it maintains the routing table okay this maintains the routing table routes and inside that it maintains uh, entries in form of dictionary key value pairs okay okay these routes are maintained as the key value pairs of a dictionary so the keys are something like controller and it can have the value like products so this uh, controller may match dynamically with the product which is provided as part of the url path name so here suppose there are two controllers one is product controller and another is a, say home controller okay so uh, if your uh, url contains home then this controller value will be home if your url contains the uh, products then the value will be product so this is the key in your dictionary in this routing table entry these are the key this is the key and this is the value okay there are multiple key value pairs inside this route so using this static method routes uh, uh, okay this map http route you can define the root template so uh, you can give the name of the route you can define the root template so this is the important part so here we define that my url path name this path name segment must start with api okay it must start with api followed by controller so you can see that controller is specified inside the uh, curly braces if it is specified inside the uh, curly braces that means it's a placeholder it's a placeholder that means the user can specify any name of any controller so it is variable okay similarly id is also placeholder okay that means here user can specify the any id so this id will match with whatever is given so suppose user is writing products so this controller will match with the product similarly another key would be id and if user is typing as part of the url 2 then value would be 2 right so these are the placeholders but api is the literal value so user must type in api as part of your url so this is the root template and sometimes we may also define the default values of the some of the placeholder so here you can see there is a default value for id it is optional that means this id is not mandatory if we do not write down the default thing then the user must provide this id but what we have seen there are two get methods get all products and get product id so if your url which will contain the path name so this segment will contain path name which contains id then this method will be invoked if it doesn't contain id then it will invoke this action method get all products so because why because here this id is set up to be optional so this is automatically generated code okay this is automatically generated so these are the root, uh, default root template 
and even uh, you can specify the default value of controller so suppose you don't want this controller uh, to be the variable okay so for testing purpose suppose you are going for only one controller so here you can directly uh, you can remove this part or even these two parts can be removed and you can specify that uh, my controller is always say product okay that can also be set up as the default value so uh, this is clear uh, the routing the how this routes are set up in the web api config uh, class in the this static method register this method will be invoked whenever our web api application begins at that time routes will be set up the default route is always there we can set up additional route we can set up additional routes so this is very general enough route so it can match with multiple controller present in our application but the url path name must begin with api it must begin with api followed by the controller name followed by optional id is it clear any doubt Any doubt so far? And there is a possibility uh, that if multiple uh, action method may match, then it will throw an exception. It will raise an exception. Suppose we have two method. One is get product. Another is get all product. Then uh, here you can see that. if your uh, path is api slash product and you not specify id then it might match with uh, your http get request okay again we are assuming it is http get request then both the method will match it will result into error okay it will throw an error at run time okay so you will get the you will uh, receive the error message on your uh, browser window because multiple methods match so uh, for this uh, root template several parameters are there in your http uh, in your routing table and is your uh, name of the root the root template which will define the url pattern okay like we have defined api slash controller slash id okay so this uh, url pattern can be specified you can you can also have the static path but normally we go for supporting multiple controllers in our application so this is the normally the this is the api this is the convention that it is not necessary that api your uh, rest api must begin with api but this is the convention so that you can uh, uh, distinguish it from the normal mvc uh, controller okay so if you don't specify api normally it will match with your mvc controller default values you can set up for the parameters like uh, for default values of id default values of controller or optional controller or optional id that can be set up inside the defaults then uh, though we have not seen we'll see that also constants can also be specified through the regex okay through regex you can specify the some constants on the values for example uh, in the previous or here for this uh, root template this id is uh, can be any string value but suppose we want this id to be numeric only then you can specify through the regex x okay if you want to make sure that uh, it must match only if the id is numeric normally it will also accept this string also suppose i write down abc then it, abc will match with the id 
but if you want to make sure that the user must pass in the numeric value of id then you can go for the constraints and uh, this is also optional handler that can be invoked when the request comes from the client okay so right now we have not set up but we'll see that uh, <clears throat> while we study the filters at that time we'll set up our own handler okay that will be executed whenever there is an http request message okay whenever there is an http request message so whenever there is a client request then it would be handled by our web api project okay and it can do some pre processing via this handler <clears throat> there is another way you can uh, explicitly configure the route or add the routing entry into the route table for that you need to create this uh, say we define our custom route like default route of type http root so there is a method called this roots dot create root method using that you can create your own route so some of the parameters are your root template then default values and additionally suppose you have set up uh, some uh, what you have seen in the previous case some uh, handlers or thing you can set up but suppose you don't want to specify that value you can pass it as null so this is the overloaded method and you can go through that uh, and you can provide these values basically you can provide these values root template defaults constraints handlers and so on and this uh, root you can add into the routes routing table okay and you can give the name of the root and this is the value this contains so basically your routing table has the entry of type i http root okay which implements this interface and it is like i have already explained it is of type dictionary which will contain the key value pairs so this root uh, every root will contain the key value pairs and uh, and whenever there is a request it will try to uh, substitute it with the appropriate value so if your input is api slash products or api slash home then this controller part this controller basically a controller key will have value home so <coughs> this is how does it work so there are two ways you can uh, uh, explicitly add it into the routing table or you can go with this uh, extension method map http root and you can set up your root and here similarly you can set up multiple routes okay you can set up multiple routes and uh, the path uh, basically this framework will uh, try to match it from top to bottom okay so in the routing table it will try it will try to match it with the first root if it matches then appropriate action method of the respective controller will be called so always remember the ordering of this uh, routes matters okay the order in which you uh, define these routes in the same manner it will be a uh, match okay so the ordering matters and uh, we have also seen this uh, type of routing in angular if you remember there also there is a routing table okay in angular also we have seen the routing and you have see the routing setup for different uh, route you have diff for different path you are set up setting up the different files okay <clears throat> so in uh, route uh, in angular for different paths you uh, define the several components so there it is component here we have controllers okay in web api for different routes different controllers action method will be mapped okay so the mapping is done by this framework
and uh, it will start with the first entry of the routing table it will try to match it with if it doesn't match it will go with the next entry and so forth so multiple routes can be set up yes so we have this example wherein we have set up two two routes okay so the default route is already there okay so it is already there and we have set up our custom route for student so once again we use the uh, this map http root extension method of this root roots uh, class so we specify the name of the our root the root template would be set up like api dedu students less id so this is see that now the root is different api dedu student Plus ID. Now ID is placeholder. Okay. ID is the placeholder. And here, see that we have, we do not have the uh, variable controller. Okay, it is not there. Okay, so what we have for this route, it should match with the controller student. So we must define the student controller in our project. Okay, so it will always match with the controller. Okay, so using default, you can either set up the default controller, or you can set up the default values, or you can set up the optional uh, values of the parameters. Additionally, you can set up the constraints like uh, this ID must be numerics through regex. Okay, so you know that in regex, this D plus means. Uh, one or more digits okay okay so this is the beginning of your regex slash d plus means one or more digits okay so your here we must say that this id must be the numeric only did you student is a static path it's it is a literal value your root must contain this thing api slash did you student it is a literal value but inside our project, the controller name is student. Inside our project, uh, it will always match with the controller student. And this ID will be passed as the any of the action method. And here we have not specified it be uh, optional. Okay. We have not specified ID to be the optional in this route. That means it is mandatory. This is mandatory. When we use this root, ID is mandatory. But when we use this root, API slash controller slash ID, then ID is optional. So here you can see there are two roots, and uh, this framework will try to match it with the first one. If it matches, then appropriate methods, action method will be executed. But suppose after API, suppose my input URL is API slash home then what will happen this second route will match not the first one clear because this root template doesn't match with the first route yeah which action method will be match in student that depends upon your HTTP verb. HTTP verb or method. If your uh, HTTP verb is get, then any method inside this uh, student controller whose name begins with get will be executed. And if it is post, then any action method whose name begin with post will be match and it will it will be executed and the response will be created and it will be sent back to the client anyway we will uh, go into the more details of uh, the architecture but right now we are going uh, step by step some of the things are not known to you but it will become clear when we cover those topic in more detail 
so this way you can set up multiple route depending upon your requirement and in case in future suppose you are adding uh, more controllers and specific kind of uh, additional uh, features you want to add it to your existing project you can simply add the new routes okay so it is quite extensible you can easily extend your application by adding multiple routes so in future you are not restricted to this api suppose in future i want to start with uh, say ddu slash something ddu slash controller okay then you can set up a new route just add it at the beginning but remember always it will try to match it from the first route so if first route doesn't match it will go with the second route if second route doesn't match it will go with the third route so normally we expect that any route must match with the this default route but if it doesn't match anything then there is an error okay so normally you should have uh, one of the route at the end which should match with any all the any any such uh, uh, any url which doesn't match with uh, any of the above routes something like uh, catch all kind of thing now there are already this uh, controllers are there account controller home values controller you can add your own controller into this controllers folder and suppose we create this web api empty controller suppose uh, we'll add the student controller because now we have added one uh, root it might match with your uh, with our student controller so this is the empty template will be generated so our controller will be inherited from the api controller if we are creating mvc controller it will be derived from controller class okay so for uh, a web api remember it is derived from api controller class now we'll also see uh, this attribute based routing so sub sometime you want to override the default thing okay sometime you want to override the default thing what is the default thing default uh, root api ddu student class id this is the route that you have set up but suppose you want to override in future instead of ddu student suppose uh, we want the client to issue the request something like this api slash student slash names then you can establish via this root attribute and as the property you can specify this string so this is overriding this is also called as attribute based routing okay so either there is a requirement or there are uh, for some specific case you can override that via this attribute based routing so this get action method will be executed whenever there is a http get request with this path name okay whenever there is a path name this this get action method will be executed and it will return a static string of arrays okay it will return static string of arrays so the return type is i enumerable string so this is an example of attribute based routing for uh, convention based routing we already seen if you don't specify anything over here then automatically it might be go with the default uh, or your specified root template and if it doesn't match with the root template then it will try to match it with the second root third root if nothing match then there will be an error so again suppose we test this application and from this uh, this is my path and you will see that if you specify this path api slash student names then we are expecting array of string with the value student1 student2 i think yes it is there okay so this is the student1 student2 so here 
we are getting the data in XML format. Okay, these two string are returned. So now we need not specify this uh, API DDU student. Okay, here uh, this is overridden by the attribute based routing. And uh, uh, some of the method for which you don't want to be executed at all, you can have there is one more attribute called no action. If you write some method which is uh, you don't want to be executed or to be mapped when there is a request message, then you can have suppose some void log message. So uh, this method will never be mapped because you already annotated this method with the no action attribute. And this is one of the existing value controller class. This is the value controller uh, class, okay, which contains uh, four methods get, five basically, there are two get methods. One is with the parameter, another is without parameter, okay. So here it is having with parameter get post, put, and delete. So we know that uh, our uh, one of the root was API slash controller slash ID. Okay, so here if the controller name is values, then it will match with this controller and then followed by any optional ID parameter. Okay, ID parameter is optional. So if the HTTP if you have uh, HTTP GET request with the path name API less values, then this method will be executed. This action will be executed. If you have optional parameter or ID specified as part of the path name, then this method will be executed because now it will try to match it with the parameter of this action method. Suppose you have the post uh, post request. You can generate the post request uh, using the browser developer tools or using the different tools like Fiddler, Postman or any other such uh, client tools or call utility. You can also issue this uh, post request. And then this API less values path name is same, but only thing is HTTP verb is post. Then this post method will be executed. Then you have put then put method will be executed and even parameterized values are there. We are see that this will match with the ID because we already specified this ID to be the optional. If provided, ID will take on the value 5. And because suppose here it is post request, it is expecting the data. Okay. For the CRUD operation, what we have? It is create read, update, and delete. So for create, we have the, normally we use the post. It is post. For read, we have the get. For update, we have the put. Put or patch. Okay, put or patch. And for delete, we have the delete. Right? So these are mapped with the appropriate action method. So whenever we want to uh, create a record or create a resource, we use the post method, HTTP post uh, method, then we are expecting to send the data. So this data can be passed as the query string parameter or you can pass the data as part of the HTTP request body. So this is the request message. So there is a header. This is your header and this is the body. So here you can pass some data. So basically you are, you can pass it as the query string parameter. So normally 
we are writing something like this uh, value equal to 5 okay so as a query string parameter of the url you can pass this or you can pass uh, you can pass this value as part of the body so suppose my i have the json data say id or say name name equal to abc say age age equal to 25 so this uh, json uh, data can also be passed as part of the body so right now we are expecting uh, the data to be passed because it's a post and if you want to update the record suppose i want to update the record with the id 5 i want to update the value then you can have the put request and finally, if you want to delete that uh, string with the given ID, then you can use this delete method. So uh, see that here implementation is not provided because this is the uh, scaffolded code, but you can modify it. Is it clear? You have to write down your code. Right now, it is only uh, strings, but you can have the products object and you can uh, update it into the static array or you can directly make changes into the database and in the upcoming lectures we'll see that how to do that any doubt so far anyway we'll continue with this in the next lecture today at uh, 11 45 right any doubt so far in this example this is the values controller generated because we have selected the web api template while creating the project it is this is the default code for understanding purposes only to learn for learning purpose only and we'll uh, once we learn this concept we can apply it to our project easily okay fine will uh, stop at this point